Hey everyone, so I really hope that you enjoyed that first day of the CAD program. And this will be the full tutorial for the piston head. And if you already have made progress on it, um, you can go ahead and skip to wherever is appropriate for you in this video. But uh, I'm going to start from the very beginning. So without further ado, we're going to get started. So I hope you already watched the Fusion setup tutorial. So everything on my screen should look exactly the same as your screen. It's going to be a little bit fast, but feel free to pause whenever you need to so that you can follow along appropriately. Okay, so the very first thing we're going to do is in the top left, create sketch. And we're going to sketch on this vertical facing plane. Next, we're going to hit sketch line, start from the origin, straight out this way, and this is going to be 65 millimeters. Confirm that. Next, we're going to go straight down 90 degrees, 80 millimeters. Then we're going to go to the side here, six and a half millimeters. straight up 60 millimeters and then we're just going to close it right off so you should end up with these dimensions you can feel free to screenshot this or just pause it here if you need to catch up this should look something like an upside down l afterwards we're just going to finish this sketch and we're going to go ahead and revolve up here next extrude revolve should automatically select this upside down l that you've created and for our axis, we're going to select the blue Z axis. Now that you've selected that, it should create something that looks like an upside down cup. And this will be what our piston head looks like. Next, we're going to create another sketch. Same vertical facing plane facing towards you. And we're going to navigate to the right over here and we're going to want to slice the sketch. Basically see a cross section of our sketch so we can work on it. Another thing we want to do, we want to select this face and make sure all the intersected geometry is available for us to use our dimensions on. So once again, that's intersect. Make sure that this is selected and then you can use all the available geometry. Next, we're going to create a rectangle on the side here. Don't pay too much attention to the dimensions right now. We can very easily fix that with our sketch dimension tool. For now, all we want is a rectangle and it just needs to be attached to this edge. The dimensions, once again, don't matter that much. Now we can edit the dimensions using our sketch dimension tool up here. We're going to click this top edge, bottom edge should create a dimension like this. We want this to be seven and a half millimeters. Next, from this top edge, to this bottom edge, the length of our rectangle, we want this to be four millimeters. And finally, the width of our rectangle from there to this edge, two and a half millimeters there we go once again this is the final look of the sketch you can go ahead and pause here if you need to next once we're finished with that sketch we're gonna click finish and we should see a nice little rectangle here once again we're going to revolve up in the top right click revolve it should automatically highlight and we are going to want to select the blue z axis one more time a nice red strip is going to form and you can see the option cut has been selected which means it's cutting away material we're going to go ahead and click ok and you'll now see when we flip our view that we have now an upside down cup with a little groove in it so next we're going to use a very fun operation basically copy paste in fusion 360 which is our rectangular pattern it's up in the top right once you click it it should bring up a tab and now we can take this groove and copy it three times, which is what we need. So make sure features are selected, not anything else, features. For objects, we're going to go down to the bottom in our timeline. We're going to click the second revolve, which is our groove. It should highlight it in blue. 
And for our direction, we want it to go in the z-axis because we want to translate down. Make sure the distance type is spacing, not extent. Quantity is 3, which is what we want. And since this is going downwards and not up, it's going to be negative 7 millimeters. You'll see gray silhouette pop up. It's perfectly fine. Once we click OK, we'll see that we have copy pasted our groove three times, saving us a whole lot of work. It's pretty awesome if you ask me. So next up, we're going to create another sketch. So sketch here. And this one is going to be facing vertically at us one more time. Once again, in the right, we want to slice it for the cross-sectional view. And then we're going to create not a two-point rectangle, but a center rectangle. Now over here, let's be careful. We want this center rectangle to be centered on this axis, not anywhere else. So make sure you're on that axis before you click. And now you can see that rectangle stays centered no matter what the dimensions. Now the exact dimensions of this we want is going to be 40 millimeters by 75 millimeters. There we go. So now that we have that rectangle, we just need to constrain it one time. And that will be to the top of our piston head. So we're going to click the top of the piston head, the top of our rectangle, and we're going to constrain that to be 40 millimeters. And the reason for that is just we want this to rest perfectly on the bottom right here. Okay, so now that we have that rectangle, I'm going to go ahead and finish our sketch. Take a nice bottom view. This is right in the center of our piston head. And now we're going to extrude this. Top right, hit extrude. Make sure that that rectangle is selected. It should do so automatically. And we're going to hit two sides. You want it to go in both directions. And for distance, we're going to say all for both of them. So as you can see, it cut two little openings in our piston head, which is exactly what we want. So once we see that, we can click OK. Awesome. So now that we have that finished, we're going to do yet another sketch. You can see catting is just a whole lot of 2D sketching, and we're just turning those shapes into 3D. So we're going to select the bottom face or the underbelly of our piston head. And we're going to create, yet yeah, not a two-point rectangle, but a center rectangle once again. And make sure the center rectangle isn't at the origin, but along this vertical axis. And make sure the vertical axis is pointing to the two grooves. So the two grooves should be top and bottom, not left and right. So once again, centered at the vertical axis, not the origin. I'm going to click. And then we're going to enter the dimensions, which are going to be 19 by 50 millimeters. Go ahead and hit enter. Now we've created our rectangle, and we're just going to constrain this one time. So we're going to click the bottom of the rectangle and the origin, and we want that distance to be 15 millimeters. Go ahead and hit enter, and there we go. This is the sketch. Go ahead and pause it here if you need to catch up. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to move on now. So now that we have this sketch, we are now going to extrude. Oops, that was a mistake. I'm going to select this, I'm going to extrude this. And the distance we want is going to be a total of 60 millimeters. Go ahead and hit OK. And now we have completed yet another part of our piston head. Now, here's another tool that I find very, very useful, very, very interesting. And that is the sim or the mirror tool. Basically creates a symmetrical copy, which is exactly what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to hit mirror, make sure we're selecting features once again, and we're going to select in our timeline our most recent feature, which is our extrude. So we select that, select that block that we just created, and for our mirror plane, we're going to want to mirror it this way, so across, so that it ends up somewhere right here. 
And there it is right there. Once we've selected it, we can see a little silhouette of what it's going to create, which is exactly what we want. I'm going to hit OK. And now you can see we very quickly made a copy without doing so much extra work, right? So now that this part is done, we are almost finished with our piston head design. Just one last piece is going to be creating a hole to connect to our piston rod. So to create that, once again, you guessed it, we're going to create another sketch. So we're going to sketch on the surface. And this time we're going to use a circle, a center diameter circle. And what we're going to want is we're going to want to align it with the center. Once again, the center axis. Click. We want this to be 25 millimeters in diameter. Go ahead and hit enter. And once again, just one constraint. From the center to the bottom, we're going to want that to also be 25 millimeters. And there we go. This is what your sketch should look like. Feel free to pause and get this done. I'm going to finish sketch. Can take a bottom diagonal view. And we are going to use the cut feature of extrude for our circle to actually get through all of this. So another cool feature of extrude is that you can actually use this arrow to just drag. Or you can put an exact input in here. All right? doesn't matter which you use, but all serve the same function. So. All we want to do, whether you type it in or you drag it, we just want to make sure that this hole goes through both of these little steps. So once you have that, we're going to click OK. And once we take a look at it, we can see that two holes just got generated right there. Now, at this point in time, we are actually completely done catting this piston head. Congratulations. But now we're just going to spice it up a little bit with our fillet. It just kind of smooths the edges and makes it look a lot more professional. Now with the fillet, it's really up to what you think looks best. I'll be providing you with values and feel free to just use the ones I have. But this is really for your personal preference. What do you think looks best? So for our first fillet, we are going to find four edges here. So one, two, three, and four. And that fillet radius, and the radius just means how much of a fillet you want. And you'll see that for this one, we're going to do 30. We created quite the fillet right here. It's really smoothed out that edge, 30 millimeters there. Our next fillet is going to be I'm going to click that again. These four edges of these stubs we extruded out. And this one's just going to be 12 and a half millimeters. And finally, we are going to one last fillet. This one's going to be quite a few. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different edges we want to fill it out and all of these will be five millimeters I'm gonna hit okay and now we can see this just looks a lot more smoothed out and refined so congratulations you have finished all or you have completely finished one piston head now one final piece we're going to do is that in a va engine there's a total of eight piston heads right so we're going to use our CAD copy paste or our rectangular pattern to create eight of these piston heads in our model. So I'm going to hit rectangular pattern. Now instead of features, we're going to make sure bodies are selected because now this isn't just one feature. We had a lot of features that went into this, right? This is an entire body. So we're going to select the body. And the directions, this time we're going to do multiple directions. So one direction we're going to select is the screen one forward. And you'll see another arrow pops up for this other axis here, which is exactly what we need. So once again, 
same distance type spacing, but to create an array of eight, we want this to be four by two. So for the distance, we want to copy it. In the direction that we're copying it four times, we want this to be 140 millimeters. And in this other direction, it's not as specific. So we're just gonna drag it out to what we feel is reasonable. So maybe around 200 millimeters. I'm gonna hit okay, and boom, there we go. So these are all eight piston heads that you're gonna need to fully CAD out this V8 engine. Now, this is all we need for the end of the, our first session. But there's one other tool that we'd like to show you. Uh, another copy paste tool, which is circular pattern. So this actually different from rectangular pattern is gonna copy paste something in a circular way. So I'm gonna show you that really quick. I'm gonna create a quick reference point. We're gonna hit circular pattern, select our piston head, and the axis, instead of being at our origin, is actually gonna be at this point. Now, say we want another eight piston heads this way, and you'll see that instead of copy pasting it in an array of eight, we have it in a circle instead. So this is useful if you want a certain feature to be copied eight times in a circular manner. Now, for the purposes of our camp, we don't need to do this. We just want that array of eight. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to that. Rectangle body, direction, four by two, and 140 by 200. At this point, you're completely done with the first lesson. And give yourself a little pat on the back. You have completed your first big step in catting that V8 engine. Now, in class two, we'll be catting out all the other components of our V8 engine. And in our last two sessions, we'll just be putting them all together. So remember, your homework for this time is just to finish this tutorial, which if you've gotten to this point, congratulations, have your homework done. And the second piece is to find a household item and CAD that to the best of your ability using the skills you learned today. It can be as simple or complicated as you want. Just make sure you have something to show by class two. So I hope you enjoyed learning to CAD this piston head today. And I look forward to seeing you in class two.